What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MyFilmMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today I'm going to talk about the 25th anniversary of Being John Malkovich. This movie is uh, directed by Spike Jones from a script by Charlie Kaufman. It stars John Cusack, Cameron Diaz, Catherine Keener, and surprise, John Malkovich. <laughs> just in case, just in case that came as a surprise to you, I figured I would say it ahead of time anyway uh it's got audio description i checked it out it's um it's a quirky movie definitely deserves audio description because a lot of things just don't necessarily make sense as is the truth with most charlie kaufman movies all of them actually i can't think of a single charlie kaufman movie that i wouldn't say audio description because <laughs> I would say Adaptation is maybe his most accessible film, and even that still, there's still, because of the way that it jumps, you still need audio description to sort of follow what the hell's going on in that movie. So, um, yeah, this is a movie that, I don't even know how to describe this movie. Uh, John Cusack is the lead who ends up going in sort of for this job interview but, like, he works at this place with, like, lowered ceilings. Um, and he has this really interesting interview. I love the interview where it's, like, the the secretary clearly uh, can't, is, like, losing her hearing. But she has basically gaslit her boss into thinking that he, he has this uh, speech impediment that, <laughs> like, no one can understand what he's saying. So. John Cusack is like, no, I understood you perfectly. The lady outside is the one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but of course, he's like, no, no, she's she has a doctorate in, in speech pathology or <laughs> something. And it's you get a you kind of get the tone really early on from this, and it ends up being that they find a door that actually places them inside the mind of John Malkovich, <laughs> and um, so weird things start happening to him where he. He's not fully in control and there's like somebody that's inside his head and eventually John Malkovich has to like work his way to figure out what the hell is going on with, him, <laughs> with himself as as people keep like climbing into his his consciousness inside his head and um operating him I guess it's it we we learn John Cusack at the beginning as a puppeteer who's out of work but he needs to get some work and like the world just doesn't need puppeteers right now I guess you know uh, I, I, I guess this is like some sort of answer to, you know, uh, well, we, the Muppets got canceled, so <laughs> what else do I do? Um, but so he he's pretty good at puppeteering John Malkovich. And there are some really just bizarre sequences. I love the scenes where he, you just Malkovich, 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 Malkovich. Um, Charlie Kaufman's a great writer, and Spike Jones is a really talented director. And when you take the two of them together, you have a genius who's writing, who's filtered through Spike Jones. I do not like when Charlie Kaufman is directing his own stuff because he's not there to filter his his thoughts and ideas, and his things often become muddy. His ideas sort of their. Uh, he really is somebody who needs to be filtered, you know? He really is somebody who needs to be adapted by a director onto the screen, uh, who needs somebody to go, oh, I see what you're doing here. Here, let me let me do it this way. You know, let me let me put let me put my spin on what it is that you've written here. And Spike Jones makes a coherent movie, which is the same thing that later will happen with adaptation, uh, where again is a script not a direction by so uh, but then on other films where you see it's directed by charlie kaufman you notice that it's a little bit wilder a little bit less linear a little bit more non-coherent like i'm thinking of ending things um so i think this is the question that i always ask with these anniversary releases is does this stand the test of time so I would, I would say, uh, I think yes so far, but I think this movie has potential to be forgotten only because there's so many movies to have like cult followings for. 
I think being John Malkovich still has a following. This is not a film that people necessarily talk about wildly because John Malkovich is not necessarily in his peak moment. Spike Jones is not. Uh, John Cusack is not anymore. Cameron Diaz stopped acting for a while. She's got another thing coming out with Jamie Foxx soon, but um, yeah, she quit for a while. And Catherine Keener, while uh, she's been working, she's never been, you know, uh, at like an A-list level. So there's nobody really here to talk about. So you just have to, it really requires a whole bunch of people in my age range to keep talking about being John Malkovich as being just a great movie. Or how about the fact that, you know, when pe we have people who are coming up through the ranks and they're looking at what films to watch, they often look at things like AFI lists, IMDb Top 250, what films were nominated for awards. This has three Oscar nominations. This has a Best Director nomination for Jones, a Best Supporting Actress nomination for Keener, and a Best Original Screenplay nomination for Kaufman. So, and it deserves them. The only one that I would have maybe added, but 1999 was a strong year. Although, as much as I enjoy Haley Joel Osment being at the Oscars because we don't nominate child actors enough, it's hard to say that I would have kept him over John Malkovich because the the things Malkovich is really uh, asked to do some wild things here. But at the same time, I understand why he wasn't nominated because sometimes it's hard to nominate an actor for essentially playing themselves. Even though this is a very different version of himself, a, a heightened version uh, in this comedy that Malkovich is really w willing to play with, it's sort of like the same way. It's like, that's not actually Nicolas Cage of unbearable weight of massive talent, <laughs> you know? Um, but there's a, there's a reason why he was kind of being ignored is because people are like, well, you're just playing yourself. Like, there's a difference between typecasting, where we consistently say an actor is typecast and oh, well they do that all the time there's nothing special there that's the, they do that in every movie versus literally playing yourself <laughs> like actually so um even if it's just even if it's still a version of yourself you're still playing yourself so that's hard to get an oscar nomination for so i also understand why john wasn't nominated but it's hard not to watch his performance here and go yeah i almost wish we could have you know, so without even going too deep, it's like, who do I think gave uh, between Haley and, and John, I would say John Malkovich gave the better performance. But, you know, I mean, Michael Clark Duncan's performance is good also in Green Mile. But again, I could say the same. I think Malkovich probably does more. But um, Michael Clark Duncan is kind of the heart of Green Mile, just like Haley Joel Osment is kind of the heart of the Sixth Sense. So you just go. Yeah, I know why those I know why those nominations are there. Um, anyway, um, so that is uh, that's that's my glowing little uh, push push you toward the being John Malkovich. I like the audio description for this. Um, I thought it was uh, from what I remember. It's been it's definitely been years. This is not a Desert Island movie for me. This is a movie that I just liked. Thought it was quirky when I saw it. But, um, admittedly, even for me, has just sort of disappeared from the I need to rewatch this again and again type list. So maybe my third time watching being John Malkovich, if I'm being that honest, I really think I've only seen it twice. So when I was trying to, like, remember a lot of the visual stuff from when I used to be able to see, matching it with the audio description to see if it could bring it back. Some of it, yeah, some of it, definitely. Like the scene when everybody's wearing... John Malkovich's face and he just keeps looking around and seeing himself in all these different weird body forms um yeah that's interesting like and that came back to me because it was an interesting scene when I saw it but uh not everything and of course the ceiling I do remember the ceiling I remember how uh, Cusack had to like constantly like bend over and duck in this weird set that they had for him anyway um it's a quirky little movie cute and if you haven't seen Being John Malkovich, you're doing yourself a disservice. So uh, why don't you find out what happens when people keep jumping into the mind of John Malkovich. And when it's written by Charlie Kaufman, anything's possible. So <laughs> it's got a weird ending to it. It's got such a weird ending to this movie. Um, but I like it. So I'm going to give Being John Malkovich an A. I think it deserves it. So... 
This is a film, by the way, that I think uh, I really want to open up the conversation to some of these Oscar channels and say, go back through, what were the other five? You know, if you had to predict what other five films, if we had the Oscar 10 going back years, what would have gotten in? And that Best Director nomination for Jones hints to me that being John Malkovich, if we had gone to 10, might have been the Best Picture nominee. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the other side.